Hello and welcome. Today, I'll be going over the controversy regarding Palea's disastrous Steam launch. For those of you who aren't familiar with the situation, I'll give a quick summary. Palea is a free-to-play, quote, cozy community sim MMO, end quote, that is currently in open beta. On December 14th, 2023, the game was released on the Nintendo Switch, and on March 25th, 2024, the game was launched on Steam. Prior to that, the game had already been available on PC. On Steam, the reviews have been scathing for a few reasons that I'll get into. For those of you who watched my channel, you'll know that I've been playing this game for about four months on PC. I've been enjoying the game and have been pretty tolerant about the in-game bugs and performance issues I've experienced because I knew the game was only in open beta. But what if I told you not everyone did. One of the major reasons why people are leaving mixed reviews on the Steam is because nowhere on the Steam store page does it say the game is in open beta. So this got me thinking, was this also the case for the Switch launch? So I did a little digging and found that as of right now, there is no indication on the Nintendo eShop that the game is in open beta. This is a problem. After rewatching the trailers for both the Switch and Steam launches, I realized that unlike the initial trailer for the game, the words open beta were absent. This is also a problem. And before any of you even try to defend this by saying, the game is free to play, it doesn't matter. I'm going to explain to you why it does matter. <laughs> when a game goes into open beta, it means that the game is still in development. Now let's say you decide to play the game for the first time without knowing this. At this point, you have essentially entered a game where the expectation is that you'll be playtesting without knowing that prior to download. Some people aren't comfortable with that, and players should have the option to make that decision prior to download, not after. You only see the beta label once you launch the game itself. This would be like getting a free bag of chips off a street vendor only to realize it was a free sample, despite no indication on the package. You didn't spend money on it, so you're not angry, but you do feel cheated and lied to. This is exactly what happened with Palea, and it looks like they've done this not once, but twice now, and I can tell you, after playing this game for about four months, it's probably in a state that is closer to early access than beta. I have played several early access games, both on the channel and on my own, and I can clearly see that this game needs a lot of work. The game is incomplete, only having two major areas to explore and gather materials from, not including your home. So this game isn't in open beta, but early access, in my opinion. If you go to the game's website right now, the beta label can only be seen in the original trailer of the game. That's it. It's not listed anywhere else that I can see, even when I perform a page search. Here are some of the reviews left by Steam users. This game isn't set up for playing with friends exactly how you'd like. You can't team up on quests or build stuff together. Kinda designed to be a single player game. This other comment reads, No game should be charging $50 for a cosmetic outfit. I can buy Baldur's Gate 3 for the price of one of the outfits. It's not very cozy of them. With the amount of cosmetics they release, they should be much cheaper. It's enough to ruin the experience. Several of the comments mentioned that the cost of the cosmetics are too high and that having the only pets in the game locked behind a paywall frustrated them. I definitely agreed with these comments, especially when I also mentioned this in my initial review of the game. This other comment says, Disappointing bait and switch. Ever bought a jumbo pack of jelly beans only to discover they're all licorice? That's Palea. Hours, 500 plus, before it was on Steam. Played since, closed beta. TLDR, gameplay quickly turns into generic fetch quest spam that makes little sense. Multiplayer features are half-baked and don't promote player-to-player -player interaction. Game becomes grindy and RNG heavy real quick. Monetization is the dev's primary concern with new $30 to $50 outfits every month. Developers can't communicate effectively, often coming off as hostile. They also censor Discord, Reddit, and Steam forums. There's a lot of progression breaking bugs that take four months to be fixed. It also has an unaddressed cheater problem. Interestingly, there's been a lot of comments that mentioned issues within the official discord of the game, which are a huge red flag. That same review goes on to say, 
Developer Direction Disaster Singularity 6 is heavily bent on wanting to control all the spaces dedicated to talking about the game online, including Discord, Reddit, and Steam forums. Community managers openly tell people to leave the community and randomly hand out bans for criticizing the game's direction. Local community members receive targeted harassment from the official Discord moderators and their friends for criticizing the game. Active community members are regularly banned off the official Discord for manufactured reasons. Monetization was always handled in the worst way possible, often resulting in glorious PR failures. One week into launch, the cash shop got flooded with deceptively priced outfits costing as much as $50. The game's Discord was heavily astroturfed by fanboys defending the practice. Poor shaming and harassment was rampant. Just get a credit card, bro. And those who complained about unclear pricing got permanently banned. Among all this chaos, moderators, instead of moderating, were busy posting nonsense one-liners about staying hydrated. Player feedback in general has been ignored since early alpha, with issues from alpha left unaddressed to this day. In general, Singularity 6 behaves like they hate their own players. Accessibility features have been heavily requested for months, yet they're non-existent. The game doesn't even have a gamma slider. There's no colorblind options. If you want to let your kid play, you can't even reliably turn chat off. When people ask for at least some outfits to be obtainable through gameplay. They were told there will never be any free clothing. The list goes on. There's a bunch of comments that are very similar to this one, but I'll keep going. The next comment says, You ain't shit if you ain't Shep. I have been playing this game since closed beta and strive to contribute to the community and the game development as much as I could. However, while the game itself and the dev process has a lot of flaws that other people here pointed out before me, it is the community and the management that truly kills the enjoyment of the game. Whatever you do, reduce your interaction with the community to a minimum, or you might get harassed, stalked, and get death threats in your DMs like I did. All with the knowledge and silent agreement of the paid community managers, who will instead ban you and half of the Discord regulars for just asking simple questions politely. The problem is the official Discord has formed a clique that if you do not fit into, anyone from there can simply harass you out of public spaces and you won't be able to do anything about it because the same people who harass you also happen to be the moderators or are friends with the moderators. No matter how much you contribute, the only thing matters is whether you fit in with a small group of people who can do whatever they want in the Discord and never face any consequences. Consequences for like openly harassing people in the official public channels, bullying, making xenophobic comments, and reports about you. All of that is accepted and endorsed in the cozy and inclusive as it is self-advertised Palea community. They only forget to mention that they only include a very small and very specific group of people. Zero out of ten can't smooch the fishing robot. Here's another comment. Background. I first played Palea back in 2021 as a member of the pre-alpha team and have put in some 150 to 200 hours across multiple playtests. Throughout those tests, I have not only seen feedback be completely ignored, but also watched as many aspects of the game be changed for the worse. Positives and negatives at a glance. Positives. Beautiful graphics, maps are fun to explore, robust housing decor options. Negatives. No player economy slash trading, cringe inducing writing, boring repetitive fetch quests, no accessibility options, severe lack of content, very little co-op multiplayer opportunities, tons of grind with zero payoff, no player agency or opportunities for skill expression, overpriced cosmetics, riddled with bugs and errors, devs seem to break more than they fix, not marked as early access despite being entirely incomplete. The bottom line, Palea is a video game designed for people who don't play video games. If you're looking to blaze through the usual steps of a life sim in a few days before grinding the same two resources for months on end to craft some furniture for your house, Palea is a good fit for you. If you're looking for a game with meaningful multiplayer opportunities and long-term goals to work towards, this isn't it. There's some more comments. Report the game for the store page not properly conveying that it is an early access game, so Valve will force them to apply the tag. Here's another comment. Live in bliss, never join this community's Discord server. I've been playing Palea for a long time before it was put on here. I bought an outfit in game and even bought the Choppa plushie. At the beginning, we were promised a fun MMO cozy game. They are trying to stray away from MMO now, 
when that was the beginning seller point. It's all lies in this community and game. I should have never joined the Discord server for this game because it is nothing but favoritism for people who bully others out of the server and out of the game entirely. But it's a cozy game, right? If you aren't bowing down to the mods and joining in on the bullies, consider yourself banned and your motivation to play gone. If you dare to ask questions, mods aren't afraid to mute or ban you. Or just for asking, they make sure to delete your past messages so others can't see what mods are doing is wrong. But it's a cozy game, right? Not to mention the amount of bugs this game has, it feels even worse on Steam than it did when I first played. I used to host cake parties. I made wonderful friends and spent countless hours fishing and talking to the best fishing loving lad Einar. None of it, however, was worth the bullying my friends and I have received from this community that preaches about its coziness. We were so silenced that I had to come here just to warn about all of this because I know if I even breathed a word in the server, even during a discussion between adults, I'd be removed. It's been months of horrible treatment in this community, and it feels freeing to finally be able to warn others of this. Oh, but don't worry. Community managers will tell you just to leave if you don't like it. If you do join, keep screenshots at all times. Play any other farming game than this. The Stardew update, for example, is awesome. Here's another comment. I played this game for a couple of hundred hours by now, going a few months back, and while I do really like it, I can't really recommend it in this moment. There are so many drawbacks to every good thing, but my biggest issue is the communication between devs and players. It's basically completely quiet until they release a patch that fixes some bugs but always breaks a lot of other things in the game. And the way they bribe players into wishlisting on Steam so they could get a cool plushie, I don't know really. I wish the best for this game because the core game is really fun, but I fail to see a good future for this game if they keep this up. Even many of the positive comments align with the negative ones. Here's an example. I love Palia. I am really excited to see where it can go from here. It is in no way flawless and has a way to go to truly become exceptional, but it is the cozy kind of game I've been looking for for a long time. The massively and multiplayer part of MMO could use some work, 25 players per instance. But as a primarily solo player, this has probably affected others more than it has me. I do, however, enjoy cooking, hunting, gathering resources with others. I love gardening, I love exploring, and I love developing my relationships with the villagers. I choose to stay optimistic about Palea. One of the most popular negative comments on the game reads as follows. Example of what you should not do in game development. Palea had a $50 million budget. Team consists of 20 plus employees, which come from big companies like Blizzard, Sony, Epic, Zynga, and Riot. Development started in 2018. Palea was released more unfinished than Stardew Valley, a game that only took 4.5 years to make and was designed by one person who was working as an usher for a cinema. Originally claimed to be an open world MMORPG, focusing on the social aspects, which the game is literally anything but that. After the backlash of the false MMO claim, the devs created a condescending blog to tell us what they think MMO means. Devs then released a highly requested feature, pets which they put behind a paywall. Instead of providing free and paid pets, the devs released another condescending blog stating they would not do that. Over the months, instead of adding more meaningful content or even multiplayer content, they kept releasing useless content that won't have you playing longer than a few more minutes, such as obstacle course, romancing more NPCs, more NPCs, crops, cooked foods, and quests, Noticing they are losing many players, mainly due to not even considering MMORPG fans' wishes, they began trying to push out the game to every platform possible. Now that they're getting negative reviews on Steam, they made a blog stating they're just an early access game simply just to hide behind it. Now you are here. You'll enjoy the game for a few until you realize how empty and shallow the game is. This could have been a great game, but it appears the devs pocketed the millions and are continuing to focus on pocketing of your money rather than making the game better. I am more willing to spend $40 for clothes if only they have made the game enjoyable with a multiplayer experience, rather than adding fillers every patch for about a year now for more cash flow. There's also been articles on massively overpowered with headlines like 
PSA, Halia is still in open beta and should be flagged that way on Steam 2. Singularity 6, the game's developer, released a dev update number 7 in response to the criticism. It reads as follows. Hello everyone! We hope that everyone has been enjoying Paleo's Steam launch and the 0.178 update, but we also want to talk about some feedback that's been brought to our attention. Halia is currently in open beta. We want to clear the air since our open beta launched back in August 2023. The game remains as a title still in open beta. Know that we'll keep our players updated with as much information as possible as we approach what we consider to be our official launch. We're aware that there has been feedback regarding our messaging and status on various platforms, but the emphasis is that Palea is free to play and available for anyone to try. It is a continuous ongoing effort and we are committed to providing patch updates with new content, improvements, and bug fixes well into the future. In fact, looking at our version being on 0.178 means we've made over 178 updates to the game. Even from the start in the days of pre-alpha, we made sure to include player feedback and have it shape Palea to be where it is today. And when it's ready, we plan to have the following version update from 0.xxx to 1.xxx to better reflect Palea's new status. But even that is not the end. We'll keep having more patches after and developing Palea alongside our players. That is one of the primary reasons why we wanted it to be a free-to-play live service game. We invite everyone to be part of this journey. What's next? There's some exciting content we've outlined in our previous dev update and some we're not quite ready to share yet as they need a bit more time to bake. That said, we also want to share that additional quality of life accessibility features on the horizon such as brightness sliders, colorblind features, UI and text adjustments. To our players, your feedback and support of the game will keep shaping and improving Palea. This is something we extend to all players, new, old, and returning. Thank you, Singularity6. In response to this, a new article was posted on Massively Overpowered with the title of Cozy MMO Palea hand waves its bizarre beta obfuscation on the grounds that it's free to play. So, where do I stand with Palea, you ask? On the fence. I really want this game to succeed. I really, really do. I enjoy the gameplay enough to log in almost every day, and it is really relaxing. That being said, I think streamers are doing a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to the community aspect of the game by hosting cake parties and inviting viewers to play with them. I play this game mostly solo and prefer it that way, and I won't be recommending it for anyone looking for a genuine MMO experience. After careful consideration, I've also decided to put a pause on my Palea Silent Playthrough series once it reaches episode 25. In a few months, I will revisit this decision when the game is further along in development. I'll still be streaming the game occasionally, but I won't be buying anything from the premium store until the game is at least in a better state. I will still be reading the dev updates and patch notes as normal, so as to keep up with the game's progress. I really hope the devs of Singularity 6 will take this time to reflect on some of the communication breakdown, stop censoring players who voice their concerns and be more honest and transparent in their marketing materials. This wasn't a fun video for me to make, and I really wish I didn't have to, but I felt it would be a disservice to my audience to not warn them about what's going on with the game, whether it be good or bad. I will be linking all the relevant links in the description. If you like this video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe for future content, and as always, Shillow out.